The short answer is no. No, it does not. But where does this idea even come from? Because like you've heard it before, right? Why are you put cold water in there? I thought cold water was supposed to boil faster than hot water. What? As far as I can tell, there are two main sources of this myth and I want to talk about both in this video, including why they each seem reasonable at a first glance, but also, and more importantly, why they're both wrong. And the first culprit is going to be something called the Mpemba effect, when it gets flipped backwards but shouldn't. The second is going to be a misinterpretation of Newton's law of cooling, which is sometimes called Newton's law of heating and cooling, or sometimes cooling and heating, or just heating. I wish that it was just called Newton's law of heat transfer because that would be simpler. Anyway, let's get into it, and we're gonna start by being wrong, and then we'll get right. Let's go. So the Impemba effect is this strange thing that can happen with freezing liquids and the way that it works is that if you take two identical volumes of liquid, like same type, same amount, same sort of container, everything, except one of them starts out at a higher temperature than the other, and then you go ahead and set both of them to freeze, what you might find is that the one that started out at the higher temperature might actually freeze first, which is very surprising. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It actually kind of sounds like something that this guy would come up with, but it does actually happen sometimes, and it's not fully understood, but it sounds an awful lot like the reverse of the boiling water myth that we're talking about in this video. And I think that's where the whole thing got its start, actually, because if you can have hot water freeze faster than cold water, then it doesn't really feel like that much of a stretch to say that it might happen the other way if you were heating the water up instead. And then in that case, what you would end up with is colder water boiling faster than hot water. And that really feels logical. It feels reasonable because a lot of things in physics do have this kind of reversible nature to them but it doesn't work like that. But we're not ready to be proven wrong yet because we need to get even wronger. Do that by looking at an important insight from the one and only Isaac Newton. But we have to stop ourselves before we fully understand what he was getting at with what is now known as his law of cooling, which is called that even though it applies equally well to heating something up. But that's besides the point. Newton's law of cooling is all about heat transfer from one thing into another thing. And a great example of it is to think about a hot cup of coffee cooling down towards room temperature when it's left out. Assuming that the room is actually colder than the coffee, which it should be. <laughs> More specifically, Newton's law is telling us information about how quickly it is losing heat to the surrounding environment. It's not terribly surprising that the colder the room, the faster the coffee cup will cool down. And that seems really obvious and common sense but it's really important to get that down pat because it's exactly the t what the heck was that <laughs> because it's exactly the type of information that newton's law is all about the rate of heat transfer between two things is dependent on and proportional to the temperature difference between those two things and so if you have a larger temperature difference say twice the temperature difference that means that the heat transfer is going to be twice as fast in this equation the letter k is really just information about the specific materials and geometry being used but for what we're talking about in this video we can basically just ignore that now to apply all of this to the boiling water scenario that we're talking about in this video the temperature difference in question here is going to be between the water being heated and the burner that is doing the heating obviously the burner is going to be the high temperature thing that transfers heat into the water to warm it up and it's that temperature difference between the two things that drives the rate of heat transfer out of the burner and into the water and if we assume that the burner is always just at some high heating temperature it stands to reason that if you started with a colder pot of water that is a bigger temperature difference which drives a higher rate of heat transfer out of the burner into the water, meaning that the colder water is actually going to take in heat energy more quickly than the warmer pot of water, so it is going to heat up faster, which sounds exactly like it is justifying the colder water boils faster myth, unless you think about it just a little bit longer, which we're not gonna do yet, we're gonna talk about that later, but for now, it sounds pretty good. And that's the kind of thing that you have to be worried about, actually, whenever people use sciencey words to describe unscientific ideas that aren't actually justified, but they're based in just enough scientific truth 
that they sound reasonable and rational. So now it's time to figure out what is really going on, what the truth is here, why colder water doesn't actually boil faster than hotter water. And we'll start back with the Impemba effect, which doesn't explain anything in this video because it has nothing to do with boiling. So sorry I mentioned it. Remember the Impemba effect is just about hotter liquids potentially freezing faster than colder liquids and that's it. It doesn't work backwards. And here's an interesting thought. Even if it did work backwards, we gotta be careful because it still wouldn't explain anything. With the Impemba effect, we're talking about liquids freezing into solids. And if you play that process backwards, you get melting, not boiling. So that's a major problem with using the Impemba effect here, but there's more. It's also unreliable, like my memory. And what I mean by that is that the Impemba effect only happens sometimes, and it's actually pretty uncommon for it to work in the first place. Kind of like my memory, come to think of it. And you want to know the weirdest part? To this day, no one knows for sure why it ever happens at all. And I can't help but feel like that would have been super frustrating for Mr. Erasto Impemba himself. Because get this, dude was like 13 years old when he encountered this for the first time. The story goes that he was in school making ice cream in a home economics class and there was limited freezer space. And so he rushed the process to try and make sure that he got a spot in the freezer. And that meant putting his mixture into the freezer when it was still hot rather than letting it cool down the way you're supposed to. And to his surprise, his mixture ended up freezing faster than the ones that were allowed to cool down first. So this kind of like blew his mind, you know? And then he started asking about it, trying to figure out why this this happened and then like no one took him seriously for quite a while this poor kid was basically being gaslit at every step they're like nah that doesn't happen you must have misunderstood that's in Pemba's physics not real physics but he kept asking and then he lucked out by asking just the right person because one day his school was visited by a physics professor named Dennis Osborne who worked at the University College in Dar es Salaam sorry to interrupt can we talk about the name University College for a sec? Because like, what the heck kind of a name is that for a school? It's not called that anymore, thankfully. It's just called the University of Dar es Salaam. And there are lots of other university colleges in the world, but I think it's a stupid name every time. Why would I choose to get my education there when you can't decide what type of education you're prepared to administer? You couldn't decide what type of school it was supposed to be? Or like somebody lying on a job interview. What school is that again? Sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. U university College. Okay. And so Erasto asked Dr. Osborne his now famous question. And at first, even Ozzy himself was like, nah, that doesn't sound right. But Dr. Osborne was something of a scientist himself. So he brought the question back with him to work, tested it out, and was able to experimentally verify it. And poof! That must have felt really encouraging for Mr. Impemba. And then Impemba and Osborne co-authored a paper together called Cool, and the effect has been named the Impemba effect ever since. But all of this happened back in the 60s, and to this day there is still no answer to the question why it happens. There's no unified explanation. It's not Impemba's law, it's like an anomaly. And even if an explanation does come up sometime, unfortunately Erasto Impemba will not be around to hear it because he died in either 2020 or 2023. Um, that, that's a whole thing. But anyway, I know that was a long side road to go on, but I think that it's kind of a rule that if you bring up the Impemba effect, you have to tell the story about Erasto Impemba. I think it's kind of an adorable story, how like it came to be in the first place, but it's also really disappointing at the end. So then what about Newton's law of cooling? It looked so good as an explanation up front, but that's the thing, it's only a good explanation up front. Like I said earlier, you kind of have to think of it just a tiny bit more, because the thing is, yeah, colder water is going to heat up faster than hot water initially. But the thing is, is that the cold water that's heating up is going to heat up and not be cold water anymore, so then you're trying to heat up warm water or hot water or whatever. As the cold water heats up, it's closing that temperature gap. It loses the advantage as it reaches the point that the hot water started at in the first place, and then it's just gonna heat up identically anyway. So it really is just starting from farther behind, and no one cares that you're faster when you're losing. <laughs> but what about salt? No. Ish. You may have heard that salt can speed up the boiling process, and that's not quite true, but it does do something interesting. See, salt increases the boiling point of the water, meaning that the water has to heat up to a higher temperature before it starts boiling, which will ultimately take longer, but once it is boiling, it's boiling at a higher temperature, which may actually end up cooking your food a little bit faster. So that's one thing, but what about a lid? 
Well, adding a lid to the pot can retain some of the heat in there, and that will actually allow it to heat up a little bit faster. I did one test of this comparing cold water with a lid to cold water without a lid, and the pot with the lid did get to boiling a tiny bit faster, but the difference was a lot smaller than I was expecting. So, uh, I don't know, it might have something to do with the fact that there's like a little hole in the lid here. I haven't done very extensive testing on this. Um, all of the heating in this video was done using this 1.6 liter pot with a 14 centimeter diameter containing 750 milliliters of water. And it was all heated up on the same burner, just set to the highest possible setting that that burner has got. The burner and the pot were allowed to cool down between heatings um, so that it wasn't like skewing the numbers one way or another. And as for the temperatures of the water, the cold water was set to the coldest possible water that this tap can produce and the hot water was just the hottest possible water that this tap can produce. I just don't have a thermometer that I felt comfortable using for this purpose, so that's not very scientific. But anyway, it may have contributed to a little bit of measurement error too. That is all that I had for this particular video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Ah, you're following me. <laughs>